Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to the UFC Insight Podcast. Today, I'm interviewing Chris Kamikaze Karyasa. Chris, thank you for taking your time out of your day to talk to me on the show. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing real good, doing real good. All right, that's good to know. I'm going to ask you some questions about your upcoming fight in Japan. Okay. Is uh, Takeya Masugaki the toughest opponent you've faced so far? Um, I wouldn't say he's the toughest, you know, he's, he's really experienced, you know, I mean, I fought, uh, Ryan Burrell, I fought, uh, Michael McDonald, I mean, I fought a lot of pretty experienced guys, um, you know, who, uh, who are super tough, but, um, you know, Mizugaki is definitely, uh, very experienced, and I'm definitely not looking past him. All right, all right. How do you think your style matches up against, uh, Mizugaki? I think it's a great matchup. I mean, we're both stand-up guys. We both like to bang, you know. So, um, you know, I definitely think that uh, um, our styles match up great. And, um, you know, it's going to definitely be a, a good fight. You know, I think that, you know, I kind of have a better a better stand-up game than he does. So, um, you know, definitely we're, you guys are going to see that. All right, all right. Um, now, you're going to be in fighting in Japan, which is uh, Mizugaki's home country, and obviously they're going to go for Mizugaki. Do you feel that you have a disadvantage there, or do you not let stuff like that get to your head? Um, you know, I don't really let it get to my head, you know. Personally, I like, uh, you know, kind of fighting, like, outside of my comfort zone because, you know, it's, like, less pressure on me, more pressure on him, to, you know, for him to win. So just I just go out there and just... Uh, go out there and fight my fight and not really think about what, you know, kind of everything else is going on. i just able to go out there and do what I do best. All right, all right. Now, are you going to be looking for a knockout in this fight, or what's your game plan? I'm definitely looking for the finish, you know. Um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, my last fights before, you know, I've been kind of doing stuff to, you know, get the win or whatever, you know, and, you know, I, I'm really looking for the finish, so knockout, submission, I'm definitely going to be looking for it, um, you know, going to be well prepared for it, and, uh, you know, definitely looking for the knockout or submission. All right, all right. Um, when you go to Japan, is it strictly going to be business, or are you going to take some time to tour the country, you know, the sites? Oh, man, it's all business out there, you know. Um, you know, I train hard, and and uh, I'm going to go out there and, and uh, fight hard. And then uh, I got to get back home to my kids, you know. My wife and kids are, you know, they, t- you know, I take a lot of away, you know, when when I'm away training, you know. So I, I go out there, handle my business, and then I can get home and be with, be with my family. All right. All right, now I'm going to ask you some stuff for the website. How did you end up getting the nickname Kamikaze? Um, you know, I got it when I was uh, racing BMX as a kid, you know, and uh, um, just coming up, you know, I had a had a kind of a crazy, crazy BMX style when I was racing, and um, you know, kind of name just stuck. So um, that's how that's how it all how it all became BMX. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. All right, what type of music do you have on your iPod? Me? Um, I got pretty much all hip-hop. You know, I'm a hip-hop guy, so um, pretty much all hip-hop on my iPod. All right. What what song are you going to come out to in Japan? Do you have an idea yet? Um, you know, I don't have an idea. You know, I, you know, I kind of like coming out to Jay-Z, you know, I... Um, you know, that's always kind of been, I kind of like coming out to him, so might might see me come out to like 99 Problems or something like that. <laughs> All right, yeah, Jay-Z's pretty raw for sure. Yeah. All right, how many hours a day do you train? Um, You know, I train I train a lot, you know, I usually do between like uh, two and three sessions a day, so, um, you know, between running, uh, strength and conditioning, you know, jiu-jitsu or stand-up striking, you know. Um, so I'm pretty much training about, you know, between like four and six hours a day. Sweet, sweet. Um, what is your current ranking in jiu-jitsu in your belt? Um, I have a purple belt under uh, Ralph Gracie and Kurt Osiander. All right. 
Um, what's the coolest thing about being an MMA fighter? Um, you know, basically, just basically doing what I love, man. I love fighting, and, uh, you know, I just go out there and, and, and do it. I think that, uh, you know, just being a martial artist and learning and being able to train all day and, and uh, you know, keep keep doing what I love and make money at it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Uh, what's the biggest disadvantage? At least try to make money, at least. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. What is the biggest disadvantage to being an MMA fighter? Um, I would have to say, uh, you know, the time away from your family and stuff, man. I would say that, you, you know, because there's so many different aspects of the sport, you know, I mean, you're training in, in um, you know, so many different aspects that, uh, you know, you kind of, as my wife would put it, all the time gone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you train outside of San Francisco a lot? I mean, because I know you own a, San, a gym in San Francisco, right? Yeah, I own a gym in San Francisco. I just, uh, you know, I just moved to Tucson, Arizona, and I'm opening a gym out here um, pretty shortly. Um, so, you know, I train everywhere, you know, and uh, I I uh, just, um, you know, I did my last camp at the TriStar Gym. Um, unfortunately, you know, I'm in the, in the process of opening another gym, and I got to do some work at my gym in San Francisco, so I can't go up there for this camp. But uh, I'll be doing primarily most of my training up in San Francisco for this camp. All right, sweet, sweet. What's the biggest name you've ever trained with? Biggest mixed martial artist fighter? Um, you know, I I got a chance to train next to GSP. I mean, uh, when I was up there training for my last camp, um, you know, GST was uh, getting ready for his fight coming up against um, uh, Carlos Condit and uh, before he got hurt. And um, so I was, uh, had the opportunity to be training, be training beside him. And so I would have to say the biggest name that I got to train next to was uh, GSP. Did you learn a lot of stuff from GSP? Was that a great experience? Oh, uh, yeah, man. That was a great experience, you know, because, uh, you know, I was, you know, learning a lot from, uh, you know, Coach Farad's the hobby and, and uh, you know, just being in the same room and doing all the same things that, uh, you know, GSP is working on and, um, you know, just kind of helps you bring bring you to the next level. All right, all right. And last question, uh, what advice would you give to a young person looking to become an MMA fighter? Train hard, you know, and, uh, you know, it's, Stay in school, train hard, and, uh, I mean, that's pretty much about it. I mean, you know, that's all I, that's all I can say is uh, stay in the gym. You know, don't get sidetracked. You I mean, one thing about becoming the best is, is you've got to train all the time. So um, stay in the gym. Stay all off right. the street. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, well. Chris is going to have an upcoming fight at UFC 144 in Japan against Takeya Misugaki. Chris, thank you for your time today, and good luck in your upcoming fight. All right, yeah, thank you very much, man. You know, I'd like to thank all the guys out there who helped, you know, helped me get ready for this fight. And um, all my fans out there, you know, watch me on uh, February 25th at UFC 144. All right, Chris, thank you very much for your time, and good luck in your upcoming fight. Thank you.